that's a lot of longevity in the USL, especially in, in one particular team. And They you know, play it up ahead on the far side. Here's Amo breaking in. The keeper's out. Sadini scores! Prince Sadi, four and a half minutes in, earliest goal of the year for Athletic, and Hartford jumps out to a rare. Yeah, great drive down the left side. We talked about how Edwards can be dynamic and really just an unselfish heads-up play to lay that, lay that off for Sadi, and it was Sadi. Just to lay it off for Sadie there. You're not going to find an easier finish. Kyle Edwards did all the work for him, and Sadie made the effort, had the belief in Edwards that he would get past his man. It was quite intentional. They wanted to hang around in that game as long as possible. Turnover by Hartford. Here's Francois. He's got McGlynn to contest with. Put up on goal, and it's in. And we are tied at one. Cristiano Francois, and Sean, that, that's kind of emblematic. It can be unfortunate. Connor McGlynn gets this tackle perfect. It just deflects off his shin over Joe Rice. He's scrambling back and just can't quite get to it to push it over the bar. Rice did not get back in time, so Cabato forming a human speed bump. Once again, they come left. Francois had Benitez overlapping him, chips it in, goes through, a shot, and a goal. 2-1. Just like that, RGV jumps on top. And it was Cristiano Pinzon. Left side channel has no trouble getting across off. He looks up. Sees where Pinzon is, drops it over the Hartford defense. And running on late, Christian Pinzon is not going to miss from there. Glances it off the side of the post, making sure that Joe Rice has no chance. Third goal of the year for the 25-year-old from Bellflower. A chance to tie up the match. Prince going for his second goal of the night here in the 35th minute. Game is tied. A brace for Prince Sadie on the PK. Athletic now five for five from the spot this year, leaving it two. Sadie stares down Derek Waits, watches for him to go, and then sends the ball the other way. Just a really cool and calm, composed finish. I don't know. Can we keep this pace up tonight, Joe? I don't know if they can. I don't know. Mafeka, Diaz slides to keep it alive. Masoso, Hackshaw, Pelaez! What a dream start for Oakland! The Roots go on the road. Comes off a set piece, but talk about the off the ball movement. Neville Hacksha does so well, stays on side, and then it's a ball back across. But you talk about Anwar Palais was so good against San Antonio. Picks up right where he left off here in Orange County. Fantastic technique over his right shoulder. A lot of traffic right in front of Shuttler. No chance. It's Milan Oloski stepping up to the spot. And in the spotlight, he scores again. Orange County's main man pulls OCSC level on the night they clinch the playoffs. Lindo drops off, watches his left leg, the extension, and just trips up Brian Oloski. His brother says, thank you very much. Cool as you would like. Just ropes this thing low and hard as he closes hips. No chance for Paul Blanchett. Off to the corner to celebrate. 14th on the year. 1-1 here at home. Draws this thing right before halftime. True path, Lone's corner. Ball across, Blanchett missed it, it's in the net! Among the Tones! 2-1 Orange County, right before the break! Two goals in first half, stop, it's time! Set pieces are, with the quality of Owen Lamb, always gives you a chance, just ropes this ball top with your six. 
but if you're Paul the Wall, if you're Paul Blanchett, just misjudges it. Comes off his line, you need to be extremely sure and extremely decisive to make any sort of play on it. As you get caught in no man's land, the man you just denied is right there to smash it home. I wonder if there's just a, a little bit of lag from playing a team that takes so much out of you. Ball streaking ahead. Oloski. Ball taken away. Brian Oloski, oh wow! Oh wow, what a goal! Orange County, their third in 10 game minutes! Turnover from Emma Clementa, and it's emergency defending. This run from Thomas Among, he pulls out. Neville Hackshaw, and that opens up a gap about 20 yards out. Great recovery from Eric Clementa, but who's going to react? Who's going to win this 50-50 ball? Brian Oloski doesn't need a second invitation to pull the trigger. So instinctual. Fantastic strike. Nice spell of possession for the home side, Charleston. Over 52% possession on the season. That one's crossed in. Chested down by Traeger. Tristan Traeger cuts to his left. Running out of room, chips it across, and denied by McGuire. Second chance, it's Augie Williams, and the host lead 1 0. Keeper did really well here in the first one. McGuire, 1v1 here, does really well to beat his man. Gets right to the line, cuts it back, and Williams at the far post. McGuire saves the first one, but makes no mistake with the second one. Williams gets his 13th goal of the season in the opening 10 minutes of this game. The battery goal with a sparkling finish is brought to you by Diamonds Direct. Augie Williams last week at El Paso had a penalty saved and actually missed the penalty and then had a shot saved. Joaquin Rivas to keep Miami's playoff hopes alive steps up and nails it. We're level at one. Just came over, knocked him over, and Rivas. Oh, cool, calm and collect. Rivas has space and has Salazar. Chips it ahead. Salazar scores. What a feed and what a finish. Probably the, the highest moment of quality that we've seen from Miami FC in attack. And Salazar has been the guy to inst inst start their attack. We look at here, hold up play, lays it off. It then takes off, makes the running behind. And who provides the assist? Rivas, the man we talk about having quality, get him on the ball in the midfield, and he does exactly what he does best. Provides assist for Salazar, buries the ball into the back of the net on the volley. Miami FC back into the lead, 2-1, and back into X spot, holding on to the last playoff position. A cheeky chip. You've got to fancy them, you know, desperation, wonderful crowd they yes. have here at Keyworth. We've got every chance. Great opportunity in the box, one-on-one. -on -one. Between the legs, a fantastic finish. Maxi Rodriguez, exactly what Detroit City asked for to open this one. The creating opportunities, getting ball in the box there. It's a lovely little ball through, as you say, from Ben Morris. Maxi Rodriguez just falling as he hits it, and he manages to put it straight through the legs of Hugo Ferro. Not easy to do when you're falling. Hugo Ferro, the man between the sticks to try and block it. Rodriguez for the second, buries it. On the doorstep of halftime, Detroit City doubled their lead and put themselves in a great spot to get a vital three points in the playoff picture. Aiden Roach's hand, up steps, Maxi Rodriguez for his second, sort of goes down. Whipped into the box, dangerous, a brilliant ball in. That's number three. Been a great performance from Detroit City, and the third one. 
Their leading scorer gets a number, number six on the year for Ben Morris. A great run, a great ball, and a great finish. It's 3-0 Detroit. Whips it in towards that near post, and Ben Morris times his run absolutely perfectly. Bryant, head up here, puts it into that danger area where you've got to ask questions. If Ben Morris, the quickest to respond there, ahead of the centre-backs. We mentioned earlier in the match, this is what he's good at. He's got this blistering pace, but give Michael Bryant credit for a wonderful ball. At that back post that's been very shaky for Lou City. Elvis Samo is asking a lot of questions. That's a great ball. And it's brought down by Tellefson. Tellefson cutting. Tellefson! Ripples the rope. Lou City in transition. Take a 1 0 lead. Now McCabe, he'll pull the strings on the other side. It's all about composure, using the momentum of Kibato against him. Least preferred left foot, no problem whatsoever. Hips around the bow, bends it into that far post, kiss of death against that post. Off to the corner to celebrate. What a terrific individual goal for anything. They will be the number two seed if the result holds as they trail 2-0. Here's open up through the middle. Amo sends it back. Merrill, one touch. Merrill has leveled the terms. The halftime substitute with a strong strike beats Semla, and it's one all. You bring in Luke Merrill, the versatility, a different look, both combining. But it's all about decision making here from Antoine Openo because he pulls out West Sharpie and he just whips this ball into a dangerous area. But I thought I thought this ball from Amo. The angle was closed down as Luke Merrill does not hit it first time, but does extremely well. To create a fine, a nice little window between the legs. There's nothing that Oliver Zemla can do. Straight between Sean Tosh, no one steps up, no one closes down the space. Incredible offense on the home side. And here is Forbes. He sends it left. And a pretty good attempt, and it is into the net. 30 seconds in, Riverhounds strike. Up. Popping up at the back post, the movement was really well done from the visitors. Sometimes in the attacking third. Fernandez saw him as the ball just a little bit short of him that time. Show on me. The ball is in once more. Pittsburgh has doubled their lead. It's 2 0. Right there was Arturo Ordonez. <laughs> and the Rowdy's now really in a hole. This was trying to find a way into space. The turnover happens. The ball ends up on Forbes' foot. He finds the newcomer to the game, Shuami, who knows exactly what to do with the ball, puts it into the near post area. Chance here. Casiedo swings it to the right side, looking for Lapa. As you talked about, if Lapa goes, may have that initial opportunity. Still a chance for Memphis. Ward gets through and scores. What a strike! Ward did not hesitate. Just inside the 18, a deflection. It looked like off one of the locomotive players. Had Diaz moving initially, it looked like to his right, ball deflected back to the left. Looked like it may have hit the back of Navarro. Yeah. Yep. Just the side of his leg or something, but brilliant from 9 1. Earlier, they tried to go to the back side of the 18, very high. Here's the Kelton crossing corner. Header what and a goal. A goal. And Memphis is going to take a two goal advantage. Into the half, and it looks like Lucas Turchi made the connection. What a goal, what a ball, what a header. Great ball, loads of pace on it. Turchi's wide open, nobody near him at all. I don't know if they just switched off or they just, no, he just tries to arrive late, yeah. It's too easy for him. It's late in the season, but you may not have seen a better executed corner <laughs> than what we just saw. Yeah, brilliant, and again, I was just gonna say, like, Lucas Turchi is, Great with his feet, and he's really good in the air. <laughs> Just 
I just can't believe they were he's wide open that much. That's way too easy. And even in the long balls, if they're going to play long balls, it's got to be into some channels and try to stretch the Memphis back four, because right now it's too easy for them. Into the 18, that one's going to slip away and go in, and it's a three-goal lead. Fernando. Fantastic. What a goal. Here we see, once the Costa gets on it, he waits, he waits, he waits, and he says, go on, Luis, get in there. And a lovely little finish. Diaz looking for offside, but what a finish. Just waiting, waiting, waiting. And he just says to his mate, go on, have that one. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's a nice strike as well to get it around. Diaz may have caught a piece yeah. of his foot. Diaz, again, did all he could to do to get out and cut down the angle. Just an excellent goal. On the app, keeping a close eye yeah. on Hartford and Louisville, where Hartford had just leveled that match up at a goal apiece. Yeah, that's brilliant. Two again, Lapa. Looking for a fourth, and there it is. Kisiedu. Kisiedu's feeling that one. Absolutely, I hate to say it, but shambolic defending from uh, El Paso. No idea what happened there. Just They're just in disarray. Lapa makes a run, guy makes a tackle, kind of, and then that's the easiest finish that Laurent Kisiedu has ever had in his career, I'd say. Well, I think the, the frustration by Navarro there is when he slipped, yeah. did not receive any help. No. But again, they're losing the ball in, in, in areas that they should not be losing it. After a slow start at home to begin the year, their first eight matches, no wins, three losses and five draws. Have really turned that around. Here's a long pass from Nadarce to Lopez, breaking in, a shot, and it's a goal! Toro's in front, 1-0 here in the 10th minute of play, and that's a, exactly what the Toros wanted, is to grab the early lead here at HEB Park. And look at this placement. It's Nadarce with a brilliant pass. Just over the top of Donovan, and then look at Frank Lopez, uses that little bit of space he's got and a little bit of trickery off the inside of that foot to put it over the shoulder of Vitiello and into the back of the net. So that second touch from Pinzon just does not find the foot of Francois. The chip by Keko right to the middle. Cicerone able to turn, fire, and score! Wow! 14th goal of the year, and Sacramento has tied it up at one. And you couldn't have placed that much better if you're Cicerone. He put that high, tight, and left ends up deflecting off the upright to find its way in. Eric was going to be able to get up to challenge that. He has to come out to apply a little bit of pressure here. And when he does so, it gives just enough space over the top for Cicerone to chip it. And look at this placement. Yeah, right can't, off the bar and in. Can't place it any better than that. It'll be pins on to take this one. And it goes, deflected in front, a shot, a score, and the Toros are right back in front. Michael Knapp coming up big, finds himself standing in the box, the ball's at his feet. And he says, well, this is no time for me to be sleeping. Knapp makes it happen. With a bit, and we'll see it again here. Look at Knapp, he says, oh, there it is, that's mine. And great placement on that, look at Vitiello, all he can do is do, go on a build up here. Still plenty of time for them to generate a good shot. To go to Gurr now on the right side. He'll cross it at the six yard box and there's a header and we are all tied up. Wow, it is game on once more here at HEB Park. And look, I mean, a phenomenal comeback here. Momentum had shifted away from you and Felipe says, I am not done yet. And he takes a shot in the process. That was not an easy header to grab. He's got to battle through. They're trying to get it to, originally to Archimed. Now here's a chance here. They'll send it into Archimed. This is onside and a goal for Sacramento. And Archimed, with maybe just his second touch on the pitch since he came on a moment ago, has put his team in the lead for the first time tonight and get the bend around Tyler Derrick. Take a look at this. He doesn't get a lot on it, but he gets enough to bend it around Derrick. 
in the last home game of the regular season for FC Tulsa. Referee blows his whistle. Up comes Goodred and scores. He never misses. It's five out of five in an FC Tulsa shirt. And FC Tulsa take the lead. 33 minutes gone here at One Oak Field. FC Tulsa one, Indy 11, nil. Like the leader that he is for this team, calm. He knows where he's going. Finishes that with class. It's exactly what FC Tulsa needed here. Colin Fernandez, who goes down, no says the referee, kind of threw himself down there to Colin Fernandez. He's had a good game tonight for me. Solomon Asante now could go all the way, could strike one. Here's Cam Lindley, good ball across the box, loads of space and a goal! Sebastian Velasquez, the 32-year-old Colombian, draws things level. No wonder there's hands and a big smile. And in the 63rd minute, it's FC Tulsa 1, Indy 11-1. Really thoughtful team play here as Asante starts things off and Lindley with the patient run on the right side. First touch gets away from him a bit, but he recovered. And you saw Philip Goodrum trying to wave them on. No, they've won it back here of Indy 11. Inside the box they come. Here's the ball across. Asante's in there. Asante wins the game of football. Does he know? Because the referee said that there was either a, a foul or there was a free kick or what's the referee given here? The goal has been given, has it? I think in the 11 have scored a goal here and they are leaning by two goals to one. Play, but FC Tulsa trying to get out of the back, but Indy 11 did a great job to pounce on it. Good ball played in across. Unfortunate touch, but falls right in front of. As yet, there hasn't been much to separate the two teams. This man can produce that moment though here. Milan Alassi and he does! Number 15 on the season. And Orange County has the lead at near halftime. But once again, he's just given too much space. They got away with it twice, San Antonio. And have a look here, he gets the ball, and he's able to go straight past Trevor or Trevor Boney. And then once he's in the box there, and he's got a vision and a bit of space to work in, look at it, he can just pick his point and finish it off then. Question marks about Boney allowing him to get past him that easy, but maybe it's just the great skills of Milan Oloski, another fantastic finish from the Golden Boot winner of last season. 37 goals. Here on this field nearly a, a year ago, where we are right now. Thrown into the 18 and volleyed in. It's an early strike from Oakland. It comes off a long throw in, and Brian Tamakis has put Oakland up 1-0. Now rallying around their boys uh, after that goal from Oakland, but it's it's just a long throw, flick on and a, and a, actually a terrific volley, a terrific volley straight out of the air, no bounce from Tam uh, Tamakas, putting putting Oakland one nil up. Oakland, by the way, leading it one goal to none. As we welcome in the host of the Always Loyal podcast, this one, this one, fit it in. It's going to be Joe Corona. with that goal. Jordan Carruth, welcome into that. This is Joe Corona here, taking the feed. Blake Bodley out wide, and it's Corona. We've seen Bodley do this throughout the season, out wide, out left, cross comes in, it's perfect. Corona on the other side, San Diego zone. What a beautiful finish it was from Corona. Corona hits as, as powerful a ball as anybody on this roster. What a feed for Bodley. Into the 18, cross for Ronaldo! One more time! Ronaldo makes it 2-1! Once again, Blake Bodley out left, creating space. A great pass to get it to him. He tracked it down. Place was electric two minutes ago. Listen to it right now. That's three goals in three minutes. What a response from San Diego. It's Bodley again, looking for his second assist in a row, and he's got it. And Damus finishes it off. 
I don't think it will be the last time we see Blake Bodily with the ball out wide. Guys like Miguel Berry, Jack Blake, others that have come through. It's been a lot of fun to watch a lot of players grow and go to the next level, thanks to San Diego. Riley trying to swing that one in! One more time! Ronaldo again! What a barrage for San Diego! And they really are putting on a show at this point. People show up tonight. It's a sold-out stadium. The energy has been there from the very beginning. They're putting on a show for the uh, fans who are here inside Torero tonight. And the supporters are responding. This place has definitely helped motivate the Loyal squad. There's no doubt about that. They can feel the energy. Jack, even after the first goal when Oakland scored, you could hear. Well, that's the most important thing about tonight is picking up three points, securing a home playoff match. Something we had to dig deep mathematically to figure out on the Always Low <laughs> podcast. Well, here he is. Perros with that shot, just as you described. A lightning bolt from outside the 18, and that's number four for San Diego. tonight from Adrian Perez. What a strike here. He's got plenty of room to roam and pulls up and Oof. wails one in to the top shelf. A little bit of fuzz on that one. Have we ever seen four and a half? We've here it comes. Into the back post, and Hetty in. Oakland will take their second in the 82nd minute. So it's another set piece. They hit a long throw in the first half, and now the short, short corner, long free. So close to saving that. I mean, he got a hand on it. Just snuck into that left post there. So Oakland. With the opportunity. Otang wins it. Musa lost it. And it stays in play for Fjellberg. Good turn from the Norwegian. That was spectacular. As he leaves Stoffer in his wake. Now it's Fjellberg. Shifty. He's in the box. It's still Fjellberg. Leaves it. Long distance hits. And it's a well deserved Colorado Rapids goal off the bench. Jairo Enriquez, but full credit on the buildup from Fjellberg. Great job, you see it here, dribbling through four defenders for Vegas, and then lays it off for Enriquez. Enriquez, one step, fires it into the back of the net. That is a goal. Yeah, look. Stoffer bending it in front of Bagley. Missed touch. Bagley is in. He's tied it up. Mahoney could not clear it. A mistake from him. And Bagley right there to capitalize. His fourth of the season has Las Vegas level just after halftime. Bender just lost track of it here. Yeah, under his left it. foot. Yep, right there. Bagley just spun. Had to be thinking to himself how fortunate. Always feels like he's involved in the action. Foster, long build up here from Colorado Springs, edge of the box. Scoop pass here. Foster smashes across and into the back of the nets. Tough angle from Malik Foster. And Colorado Springs jumps back in front. Yeah, Foster rewarded for his play tonight. Skundrich, what a ball from Skundrich here. You see on the turn, little flick up to Foster. Foster's been so active on the right side. He has three goals in his last two games. It's Romario Williams here for Colorado Springs switchbacks. Diaz trying to make a save for Las Vegas. And it's 15 on the year for Romario Williams. A spectacular campaign of the week. And now 15 in 29 appearances in 2023. Yeah, a little bit extra. A two goal lead and they've used three changes off the bench. Yeah, and that was one of the things Stephen Hogan said. They were going to try to decide what they were going to do with their lineup going into this. 
Here is Oteng. Oteng pulls it back. Stoffer, good first touch. He'll spin. It's Stoffer. Spectacular from Luke Stoffer. Spinning at the top of the box. And he pulls Vegas back within a goal. Oh, again, it's Oteng and Stoffer. And what an individual effort from Stoffer after he was fed in. So active on the right side. And again, Oteng, very active, plays it in there. Oh, gorgeous, just around Alain Pierre. unbeaten in his last eight overall. New Mexico winless in his last seven. There's a mistake. Moreno makes Phoenix pay. Amando Moreno off of a giveaway gives New Mexico a 1-0 lead. Concentration. If you're Triore, a big no-no to play a ball across 20 yards horizontally in your defensive half. Moreno's just there, chomping at the bit. Picks his head up. Rios Noah comes off his line. Thank you very much. Cheeky finish, up and over. Off to the corner to celebrate New Mexico. They have their lead here on the road in Phoenix. Moreno with his 10th goal of the season. And how about a way to find a goal? Rios Novo waiting. And now a pause in Portillo being delayed now. Portillo strikes, wasted no time. Bangs it off the post. Justin Portillo, four for four this season on penalties. New Mexico have two second half goals. And New Mexico United lead Phoenix 2-0. Ball, we just slide in front of Greg Hurst. As Justin Portillo, four goals on the season, eyes on the goalkeeper the whole time, knows exactly what he wants to do, where he wants to go, cool as you would like. New Mexico coming in. Trejo slips, gets it back though. Trejo accelerates. Arteaga throws out real estate, but again wide. Harvey, Trejo, Harvey, back to Trejo, leaves it, one shot, and it ripples the rope. And hope remains for Phoenix. Formella strikes. And in the 89th minute, after nearly 45 minutes without a shot, Phoenix scores. You understand the potential that this team can play at. The high quality, the ball movement, the off the ball movement, and the decision making on 100 here for Phoenix Rising as Harvey gets into the byline, the cutback ball, probably not intended for Formella. We got to be better on the break. They're missing that final touch on the attack. He said defensively, though, they're defending well, and they just got to keep doing it. Agatello got on the end of it. It bounced off the bar not once, but twice. Did it go over the line? Yes, it did. Juan Agatello puts Birmingham in front. And this is a big time goal, big time in importance. But just a magical first touch from Juan Agadello. Involved, great ball served in. A little flick behind his own back. Then the outside of the right boot. Magical touch and a great finish. Carlos Herrera doing everything he can to try and keep it out. But that ball clearly across the line before he swats at it. But Monterey Bay doing a really good job of pressing them and forcing them into a little bit speedier play. Kasim, Colin Smith into the area. Smith against Galito, gets to the byline. Smith scores! How about that from Colin Smith? He doubles the Birmingham lead. Be safe and keep their outside backs. Instead, Colin Smith says, I'm going forward and I'm going to goal. And he just hammers this ball into the far side netting. Some oohs and ahs for the crowd down below. That was 